Now, Montreal is fairly close to the US border, and it seems really incredible that the last American Formula One world champion was Mario Andretti back in 1978. Well, apart from patrolling the pit lane, Danny Sullivan has given the task of finding the next American world champion. Here, he explains more. This is where it all started, and the founder of Red Bull, Dietrich Mateschitz, asked me to find young American drivers with the skill and the character to take their place in Formula One. So we introduced the Red Bull Formula One driver search program. The goal of the Red Bull Formula One driver search program is to find and develop a future American Formula One world champion. To find the drivers for these seats, I have mystery scouts that are looking all over the country for up and coming talent in all the junior formulas. What we are looking for in the Red Bull Formula One driver search program is racers between the age of 16 and 21 with driving ability, mental and physical toughness, technical understanding, and character and confidence. The Red Bull Formula One driver search program is in full swing. The finalists will be announced at the US Grand Prix at Indianapolis. The drivers will then be put through a physical exam. And in October, they will be taken for an intense test to a circuit in Europe. We're here at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve for the Canadian Grand Prix in Montreal. And we're gonna cruise down to the paddock area and talk to some people about the driver search program. Gerhard, you did many years in Formula One, Ferrari, McLaren, you had numerous wins. At that time, what did you think it took to be a successful Grand Prix driver? Uh, I think at that time, or at uh, the time before, at now, it's always the same. You have to have an emo enormous commitment. You have to have talent, good reflex. Uh, I think concentration is a, is a main factor. But you have also to have some technical understanding. You have to know how to use all the tools you have available in Formula One, uh, politically and technically. Uh, so uh, you have to be a quite complete racing driver to be successful. Of course, you're familiar with our Red Bull Formula One driver search program. What do you think of this program? Well, at the end of the day, it's always uh, important to search for young drivers and uh, to have an eye on it. And in Europe, uh, I think uh, a lot of people, a lot of companies, uh, uh, a lot of formulas are doing this in a very professional way. If you, if you, you, you are familiar with our Formula BMW, junior program. The best example is Ralf Schumacher, what is in our team, uh, uh, one of our strong factors. He comes out of the, our junior program from Formula BMW, and uh, he is, uh, I think, a result of this program. One last question. Back in the early 90s, when you were competing, there was a young American over there by the name of Michael Andretti driving for McLaren. And uh, why do you think, at that time, Michael did not succeed in Formula One? I think he, uh, he he didn't know what's going to happen to drive in a team with Ayrton Senna. And I'd driven with Ayrton three years, and he was such an extra class of driver. And this in a combination with a different series as Formula One, I think was very, very difficult for Michael. And I remember well him flying forwards and backwards from the States, so I think he never was really prepared to come over to live in Europe and, and, and to take it to the limits. I think he was quite happy to return again to the States and to be again a superstar here. Most people think that driving a car is easy, but driving a modern day Grand Prix car is very physically tough. Think about it. These cars have 800 horsepower, weigh a little over 1,200 pounds, can accelerate up to 100 in under three seconds and they can stop from 180 miles an hour down to 50 in about 100 yards. Joseph, tell us what's the most important aspects of training for the driver these days. This is the stamina, this is the, this is the uh, fitness, and therefore we do a lot of training like uh, mountain biking, swimming, uh, cross-country skiing, and, uh, and also for the neck muscles specific training as well. Do you use a lot of weights in your training or machines when it comes to the strength side of the sport? Yes, of course, we go also to the fitness, we do a lot of weights, but then I, I made a special uh, training equipment, training machine to work this exactly the muscles we need and these muscle chains we need in the car. 
Tell me, how important are the neck muscles with everything that everybody's doing these days with acceleration, deacceleration, all the G-loading that they're pulling, how important is the neck? The neck is the most important thing, and therefore, as I said, we try to simulate this before already, put them in the car with the same seat, same seat position, same steering angle, and also the braking, and then we work a lot on this, and the driver has to be ready already if he goes for testing, you know? This is very important. One thing about Grand Prix racing, it's very expensive. And without the sponsors, there would be no racing. So the sponsor's outlook is very important. Let's hear from one of the guys that looks after the sponsors on what they look for in a driver. Steve, the question I have for you is, what, from a sponsor's point of view, are you all looking for in the drivers today? A lot of our sponsors today, Danny, realize that a driver has very little time that he can give to a sponsor. So they want somebody that in that amount of time can represent their brand in a professional way, can talk with their clients, can understand what they're trying to do with their products, can visit their factories. And so they have to spend quite a considerable time away from the circuit um, so that they can promote that brand in a, the most professional manner. Sounds like a lot of work, and I know that, that that's very important because the sponsors are looking for stuff outside of just what goes on in the track. Is that correct? That's probably where it's been the biggest change over the last couple of years is they want more time away from the track, respecting the fact that they're restricted at the track. With only 22 seats available in Grand Prix racing, the guy that sits right there is very important. So let's go talk to a couple of the drivers and the people who hire them. Ross, I'm, uh, of course, you're one of the experts at Ferrari, but you've been with Michael Schumacher for almost all of his wins, championships, everything. What characteristics does Michael have that you see to make him an exceptional driver? Of course, he's, he's got the, the talent. The first thing you have to have is, is the sheer driving talent. And you know, he's one of the best for sure in that respect. But I think what lifts him above other drivers is his professionalism and his commitment. Um, I mean, if you take his fitness, he's undoubtedly the fittest driver in Formula One. And he made sure that he became the fittest driver in Formula One. He's just totally dedicated to every aspect of being a good driver. I'm standing here with Craig Pollock. Of course, Craig, now you've been the manager for Jacques Villeneuve for years. You're involved in American racing. And of course, you're the proprietor of the BAR team. So you've got a long history. Tell me what it's like to work with Jacques. What did you see in him in the early days that made you want to be his manager and involved with him? It started a long way back because I actually uh, was a sports teacher in school in Switzerland. And what I saw in Jacques right at the very start was I think just a fantastic, pure talent. And that was even before he started racing. In the racing side, Jacques was a young kid, extremely intelligent. He had a huge amount of courage and just a huge amount of talent. We're here with uh, Jacques Villeneuve. Of course, you know, you've done Formula 3, Formula Atlantic, Indy cars, Indy 500 champion, Formula 1, and of course, Formula 1 world champion. What was the most important step for you to get to those levels? Uh, if you call in steps, that means not what you reach, because what I reached was the F F1, and that's the, the most important uh, racing in, in, the, in the world. So that, that's what was most important to win. But to step there, uh, the Indy 500 as a one event was definitely the, the, the most important. As a world champion, and you're there, what did you look at in yourself that you thought were the most important characteristics to make you that champion? Yes, to be able to have fun while you drive is a, is, is a main thing because uh, if you're not having fun, then you're not going to take the risks that are required to go fast through risky corners or to make a, sometimes what looks like a crazy move, but the, that the payoff can, can be a position for points in, in the championship of the season. So it's, it's very important uh, to have fun and to also never give up. Of course, now you're familiar that we've got this Red Bull uh, driver search program for Formula One. Uh, what do you think of that? That would be great because uh, we need uh, we need the American public <laughs> and uh, and we need a little bit of American mentality and uh, and someone that's a little bit laid back and has fun. So that that would be a good thing. Jacques, thank you very much for your time and good luck this weekend. Thank you. We are halfway through the Red Bull Formula One driver search program, and the scouts are still out there trying to find the up and coming talent. Our next show will be coming to you from Monza, Italy on September 15th. And two weeks later, the U.S. Grand Prix from Indianapolis, where we will be announcing the finalists for the Red Bull Formula One driver search program. 
So stay tuned.